One zero. Hello. One zero. Fred, did you get bubbles? Uh, I could use some more. <laughs> Thank you. Since we're celebrating <laughs> it today. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I think we are on. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We did this, this Hello. A, a little while ago. I'm Oscar. This is Fred. Hello. And uh, Fred, today the theme is about that you are getting old, I think. <laughs> That's how you are framed this. That's this, right. is, this is what we're going to talk about today. Fred is getting old. No, but um, we're going to look back a little bit here. We're celebrating. You've been here for 20 years. 20 right? years. Yeah. yeah. Nicely done. Yeah. You look, I think you're looking better nowadays well, than you did you. before. Yeah. So, uh, it's the shirt. It's the shirt. <laughs> I know, you see, I, uh, I thought I dressed up a little bit for you today. So <laughs> I dressed with flowers for you, Fred. Uh, but then you dressed even brighter. So now I think risk of looking like a gigolo here instead. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, but anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, so, Fred, uh, we were thinking of, uh, of uh, tasting through some, we, you and me, are tasting some old wines mm -hmm. here. Uh, but maybe uh, I was going to ask you some questions to look back a little bit. Okay. What have you done and, and so forth. And we're obviously going to drink ourselves through this. Yes. Because that mm -hmm. makes it easier it's, on it's, everybody. Yes. Um, and as for you who uh, have not been at the winery lately, what you see behind us here is our new library. Uh, we have built this through the winter, uh, full of wines. And uh, also, I mean, when we drink old wines, it kind of uh, reminds us about that specific vintage. So I know a lot of people come to the winery here and they're uh, amazed about uh, your memory. You're remembering a lot of like what happens, that vintage and so forth. But also have a little bit in mind, when we, when we open a bottle of wine, let's say it's an 04 and 06, it's almost like opening a diary from that year. It, like we, <laughs> we, we open up and we remember how the fruit set was mm -hmm. and the devastation and the hail or the rain. And so we get reminded about this all the time and then we look back. So, so this library is a little bit for us to help us yeah. remember back and it's, tell I stories. Mean, it's, like, it's like a rush of all the good and the bad and everything that, <laughs> right. that comes back. Um, it's, it's very funny that you, you point it out that way because sometimes when we're, we're working on wines in the cellar, you're always working on the next vintage to come out. <clears throat> and there's always the, the next vintage in the field. So yeah. sometimes you don't reflect on what you've been working on or what you have worked on or the years behind you. Um, until you pull out an old wine, you're like, oh, yeah, that happened. That happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, I was going to mm. see if we can do this a little bit in a chronological order yeah. to look back. And, you know, being here now for 20 years, Fred, it is quite a while. It so, is. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I was just, I think not, not everyone might not know how you started here, right? Mm -hmm. I know you, I mean, do you remember with this, this interview with Paul Greco? So couple, Paul Greco yeah, a is a, is a, uh, he's a well, wine aficionado and he has this wine bar called Terroir and he does Summer of Riesling. He's a Riesling profile. And he interviewed Fred and I a couple of years ago and we went through your resume, Fred. And, and he said, so you have done nothing else than just worked at Weimar? <laughs> I was, I was, like, is I was, there I nothing was, else that you've done? No. I was, I was all you've done. I was life. depressed for three days after that <laughs> like, comment. So you've done nothing else. <laughs> so, I mean, that's charming in a way. Uh, you know, I've always been fun of Fred never being online. This is also why he's not on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. because you, have, you, can't, you don't have a profile there. there so, <laughs> there's that. But anyway, that Pretty is... Boring. But yeah, But it's been exciting having you here for 20 oh. years. So, you. No, are you, you, you started with, with Herman then in mm -hmm. 2001. Mm -hmm. And then, as I, when I got to know Herman afterwards, he was... He was, you know, he's an old, grumpy mm -hmm. German. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't not that old, but he wasn't that old then. Now he's older than he was then. Still grumpy German. Still grumpy. But he got a great sense yeah. of humor. So we know him well, so we can make fun of him. But, so, now you started with him, and then why? I mean, what, what, uh, what, what made you start here? I mean, is there a... Do, do you want the romantic story? Nope, or we the don't, I today, no romantic. I'm going to okay. ask you some difficult questions. Okay, I can't, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, so... It's not romantic today. So um, I, was, um, I was studying in Germany. Um, I wanted to figure out 
how to stay in agriculture because mm -hmm. I grew up on a big dairy farm and I spent a day in Alsace and tasted with a young winemaker who was a few years older than me at the time. I was 21 and he was 23 and he was in an estate, a domain that had been making wine for just over 500 years, mm -hmm. just over 500 just years. Just a little bit, yeah. Um, and he was 14th generation to be making wine mm -hmm. in that domain, which for me at the time was just, I, I couldn't wrap my hands around how, through all the things that Alsace ha has been through, mm -hmm. that a family can, was able to maintain their domain and do what they do in that setting. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, that, it brought a lot of things into focus to say, okay, this is a really interesting trade to be in. Um, so when I came back to school, I took a couple wine courses, and then you and I met last week at classes. That's right. And we got signed on to a um, uh, an, an experience of, of it was then. The starting. end of the dot com era That's right. when everything was collapsing. I'm trying to be nice about it. No, no, but I know yeah. it was collapsing, but we got hired our first job. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And so we worked together for seven months and then we were laid off, which was fantastic. You got to go finish your. I think we got laid off because we played too much ping pong <laughs> during work hours. That, that could have been it. Also. <laughs> I'm um, still winning. Though. That's right, you are. So <laughs> then. Um, you finished your master's and then started working in Manhattan yeah. for a large distributor. And I cold called Herman because I'm like, I'm going back to Germany. And I'm going to, to learn how to make wine. Yeah. So I cold called Herman because I was at the end of my tether of not finding any or uh, opportunity or a contact. And I call, called Herman um, and he's like, well, you know, I, you, could, you could come here and and, and work here for six twenty-five an hour and learn the trade. I'm like, that sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I started here in 2001 um, in this, um, at first it was, it was really trial by fire. Mm -hmm. Everything was trial by fire. Um, he didn't talk. <laughs> at first? He's like, we do that still today. But <laughs> that's that's right. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he didn't talk to me for two weeks, which was <laughs> fascinating. I thought that that was just like the, uh, the, the, break, way. the break again period. Um, and then as he noticed that I took interest in what we were doing, I was standing there debutting rootstock eight hours a day, mm -hmm. just debutting by myself. He, he realized that I didn't quit <laughs> and that I was trying to ask him questions. Um, and he, he kept saying, no, 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 you can't talk to me during the day. Talk to me at the end of the day. <laughs> okay. So then at the end of the day, I had five minutes <laughs> asking questions. I wonder what our HR department <laughs> no, the, no, there was no HR department. No, I know. Um, so then, you know, he and I started after grafting, then we started working together in the cellar and the vineyards, and he actually started to answer my questions and realized that I was really interested in what mm -hmm. we were doing. Um, and I think what drew me to him to not quit, I guess, um, one, I, I wouldn't have done that, but two, he was kind of stubborn, he was kind of reserved, he was... Uh, very demanding. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, ah, that's my grandfather. I, <laughs> so I, I know how to work. I know how to do this. I, I can I can figure this out. But he was willing to teach me, um, and I was I was certainly willing to put in the time to, to, to learn. So so by then this is 2001. Then so yeah. this is the first four or five years. It was you, Herman, and a few people here. That was about it. Yeah, that was about yep. it. Yeah, that's right. And then, uh, well, what, what, what happened was, to the, yeah, 2001, was that he had a winemaker, right? There was, there was a winemaker here and someone who he had been working with for a while. Um, they left in the middle of the 2001 harvest. I had it in my mind and with Herman that I was going to actually go to Germany and work mm -hmm. after this vintage um, based on his recommendation. And after that, it was just Herman and myself doing all the vineyard management, all the winemaking, all the grafting, um, and I kind of couldn't leave at that moment. So, <laughs> Nicely done. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indispensable. <I think>. <laughs> <laughs> um, no one wants to debut. That's right. Uh, okay, okay. So, the, so then those first, before then, you and me, then I was in the city, and then, so 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, you're now, we're producing about five, 10,000 cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but a bottling line. There was a bottling line here. We're out in the barn. We're so 
they it, were I mean, it was, it was, it was a was fairly outside. it was a fairly Simple. small and compact production yeah, at that yeah, time. Yeah. For for harvest, I mean, basically, two thousand two, Herman and I drove out into the Riesling. We machine harvested. We come back at the end of the day and press everything yeah. off. It was insanely unromantic. It was just get the fruit in. Here's how we're going to make wine. And and um, I mean, there, there were there were there were reasons why he did things that way. One, there wasn't a lot of help in the Finger Lakes. That's right. Um, it's a very it was a very different industry than it is now. Um, I I would. I don't look back at that and say, well, this is, you know, I can't believe Herman did it that way. I look back and say, well, at the time, this is what he had to do to, to make the wines that he could make. Hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of really got my gears going about um, <clears throat> what he thought the <laughs> region. A, oh, gosh. A picture of you there. Oof. There you are. Look at that hair. Um, You're a little tired, Trey. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you know, what, what got me really interested in, in continuing this was uh, with Herman was that um, he talked extensively about what he thought the potential of the region was mm -hmm. and really where we were at that moment. Okay. We weren't um, on necessarily on the world stage. We weren't making... But we could. We could be. Yeah. And the potential I mean, that has, was there. that has been his... Preaching all the time. All right? the time. I mean, he's been very, very. Since he started. Very, in the no, we can make good wines here. We can make. We just have to get rid of the garbage. We that's get right. Rid of the get, garbage, get, get rid of the garbage. Yep. We just have to do get rid of the garbage. That was. <laughs> that's actually a point of mine. Of, <laughs> so that's no, but that's that's uh, okay. So then, I mean, he's still today. He's very proud over what Finger Lakes is doing. Yeah. Herman. So he, you know, and and from him as a as a personality, as as a person to learn from. He actually wanted to prove that Finger Lakes was. Equally good or better than Germany. Absolutely, absolutely. I think he had, he had a little bit of chip on his shoulder. And, yeah, and like, one of the things I, 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 a lot of things I took away from him. One of the, one of the things was this striving within the wine industry, um, striving for perfection mm -hmm. in kind of in an industry that doesn't have a standard for perfect. Mm -hmm. And so, what does that mean? Like, what, what are you? So every, it's it's pure agriculture. You're you're just trying to. Um, kind of manage the things that are out of, your, out of your control, but you always know that there's another vintage ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So you, you you constantly learn upon what Herman did, what he did well, what he did poorly, what he wanted to do, and you take that and you kind of package it up, and you you every vintage you know. Every, you have another it, opportunity. That's right. So usually, yeah. I mean, when in this young wine region or young wines wineries, there is a growth and exponential. Growth because you learn so much. Each yeah. vintage, each vintage gives you more and more. Absolutely. So, so okay. I wanted to then. So then, fast forward a little bit. Um, you, then, you were here in 03. You did an internship. I did an internship. Um, I mean, that changes everything. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at that picture. I knew that he had found a picture. <laughs> I look exactly the same. It's amazing. <laughs> Is that 03? I'm gonna reserve. <laughs> I'm gonna reserve comment. You're doing a great job of cleaning the counter, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I. But it was funny actually when I started. You called me. It's like we need help bottling and cleaning barrels and pulling vines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think it didn't take much. I don't know what different reasons, but Herman put me in the in the tasting room pretty fast. I don't know. Was I talking too much? Or <laughs> did the barrels didn't get too clean? I don't know what happened, but. I, I told and him. everyone knows I've been in the tasting room since 2013. Oh, here you go. A picture I think that was the last time you cleaned a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> that well. And those are decorative barrels. Those are decorative that's right. barrels. That's right. That's right. right uh, so you were here in, in 03. The, and then um, yeah. and, and, uh, 03, Maurice and I were, were married. And I went to Herman. I'm like, I'm moving to Italy. <laughs> Um, because Maurice, I want to do it. No, I, I'm like I, I, I want to. I want to not. I no. Listen, listen. I, 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 I want an experience outside of Herman Weimer. And so, she was, she was training as a jewelry maker. That's and, right. And I was, I'm like, okay, we're going to Asti because I want to make sparkling wine. And she, there was a jewelry a town right next to to Asti. I'm like, this is perfect. And so I went to Herman. I'm like, Herman, I'm moving to Italy. What? You can't move this. <laughs> And so he worked out a, a deal with her uh, with with Maurice's 
uh, boss at the time that we would stay. And so at that point, then I went to her. And I'm like, all right, what are what are we doing? What's what's the long <laughs> Apparently term I'm here? Apparently I'm staying. Apparently I'm staying. What's what's the long term here? And, and that that really kind of kicked off a uh, a three and a half year um, m- m- working together and and trying to figure out okay. Herman's life after the winery. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Yes. We're there now. Mm-hmm. So okay. So if I can ask you some questions, yes, some of them let's are do it. Uh, you know. Fun, uh, fundamental. So if you look at the last 20 years, mm-hmm. what is uh, some of the, the achievements? Like, what are, you, what are you happy about? Oh, God. Like um, one or two or anything uh, that you've been like, oh, this has been great. I, okay, I, I, think, I think one of the... the uh, you don't have to say Oscar is selling the wine. That's, we already know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think one of the... Um, one, one of the the, the best things is that we have been able to create a family kind of community here. Um, you have a house here I and know, family, yeah. and right. Maurice and I have a house here, and we have kids, and oh, we so can nice create a, a beautiful little community little here. village here. I think that is probably the, the biggest achievement, if you will. Um, if we dive down a little bit and... Do we have some wine achievements? Wine <laughs> achievements. Pick out something that... Um, was, um, you know, looking at most recently, looking at probably the most difficult vintage that we've experienced, okay. uh, 2018, and how we were able to pull out some very good wines in a just an awful growing season. And so I think from a uh-huh. from a personal, but as a as a winery, I was going team, to ask you something of the worst thing that happened to you. Is that 18 also then? I think I think eighteen as a Which being that? able to pull off a two thousand good to even survive that yes vintage. yes but okay so okay. then I'll flip that and say the worst experience here <laughs> no one of the one of the cha- most challenging points was eighteen eighteen yeah so for for you who might not remember vintages uh, eighteen I mean there's a was a lot of there was a lot of stuff. HIT that happened that year. A lot of stuff. Yeah. So what happened was uh, that not only were we just one year into taking over Standing Stone, Mm -hmm. so we had just Mm -hmm. finished that in 17 Mm -hmm. at a decent vintage, and then this was our first year figuring out what to do. And then we have this utter rainy summer. Yeah. Well, fall. We had the rainstorm then in uh, in August of 2018, uh, which actually removed roads, the Standing Stone Road, you remember? The was road? it August 9th, I think? Uh, August 9th, you see, you remember the dates. Uh, I remember it so well because you and me were at Stonecat. Yes. And we get a phone call from Nancy, my sister-in-law, mm-hmm. and she said, hurry that up to the, because your, the your wine, wine is, is flooded. flooded. <laughs> that's, I right, have, that's right, that's I right. Have, oh. I have water up to my knees. <laughs> In the warehouse, yep. so like, oh, yep. this is going to be a great yep. day. So what happened in 18 was that rain, 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 and then more rain, mm-hmm. and then uh, fairly decent maturity vintage-wise, but then more rain. It, so so I, I don't know, the, the you, you, remember, you remember the days, but you know, if you have a decent fall when you harvest, you might have then, let's say you harvest over 45 days that you have, but in 18, you, did you have 10 days of harvest days, even? Decent harvest days? We, we might have had six or seven really like perfect harvest yeah, days. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, so what happened a year? The like, other, the, other the, 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 like the, the moment that I knew that we were just in it was our friend Johannes Selbach sent me a text <laughs> and it was this, image of the, the Vale of Sonor, this beautiful line of golden fruit that he sent me. And he's like, oh, we're getting ready to pick the Sonor and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I was standing in the biofield with mud boots on and picking into a bucket because you couldn't pick, the, the fruit couldn't hold together. And it was just falling apart. And the bucket of the picker in front of me started floating down the row because there was so much water. 
And but it wasn't it was, raining because you're not picking. It wasn't. Rain. It wasn't raining. It was. It was a moment was of dr of dry on the leaves and the fruit, but there was so much standing water everywhere. No matter where you went, the bucket was floating away from the picker, mm -hmm. and I thought, "Oh my God! I mean, I think this is it. <laughs> this is the moment. Like this is the worst. This is as bad as it could get." Now, you ask. Uh, now on on back onto moments that were. I'm going to go into moments that maybe were lower than that. <laughs> Are there more? One. There, there's one in particular. So 2013. Um, big harvest. Big harvest again. Uh, we were. Yeah. It I was. It was that. a moderate. It was a decent moderate, year. Moderate. Fine growing season, but lots of fruit to bring in. Yeah. So. And we were not set up to put in that much fruit. No. Again. We had no covered press pad. Yeah. Um, the the new tasting room was not there. And we'd been talking for a while, like, you know, we really should get a, a cover over the press pad. This is, so um, we're harvesting, going like crazy to get fruit in, you know, that second week of, of October. And it was my birthday, October 16th, um, calling for snow, which is awesome. And we had presses running. So what we did, we, we took the forklifts and all the sorting tables and covered the presses with a tarp. tarp. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And it was super late. It was like... 2.30 in the morning, I'm like, you know what, I'm, everybody went home, I'm going to run into the house and take a quick snooze before I come out and, and empty the press pan. And I lay down on the sofa looking at the press and close my eyes and I just hear the worst sound that a winemaker who <laughs> has this press can hear. And it's this doo 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 doo. I heard it in the house. I'm like, oh no. No, that, that means that is the alarm that something has gone wrong. So I run out, and there it is, white snow all over the press. The, it was so heavy that it collapsed the canvas that was on top of the press. And it and turned, press turned, and the press had turned, and the canvas had, had spun into the press, and it locked the press up. So a full load of, of grapes, press pan, snow, 32 degrees, 2.30 in the morning. That was the low moment. That was a low moment. That was a yeah. low moment. But, I mean... <laughs> but, 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 there were other low moments in 13. <laughs> the doors of the old press blew off. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, so, that's why we had to... So we have an old German press that, that you have, that we now know that you had to put wedges in because the door that's was right. going to blow off. We, we've, that was 13. We've that was her original wedges. press, which we still have, but yeah. we fixed. The doors blew off in the middle of the night. Not once. But yeah. twice, it blew off the next night, even though we put these wedges in. Yeah. So that was... So 13, you have some bad memories. 13. Oh, the other, the other thing about 13 is <laughs> He's my so happy mother, about telling the bad my, stories. my dear, fantastic mother, is helping out on the press pad. Thank God she's oh, helping out. that's right. She lost. She, she, two things. One, she leaned over a bid, her sunglasses fall in, and then she realizes that her sunglasses are on her head, and she said, I think the sunglasses are in the press. <laughs> And then Marisa and I and were had dying in the press. <laughs> and then the second thing was she had a cup of coffee sitting on the side of the press. We allow no other beverages on the press pad because of this. It should have been a rule at the time. She leaned over. She knocked it with her elbow, and the cup of coffee goes right into the press. And so we had to dump that. It wasn't a lot in there, but we had to dump the press pan, pull it out, clean it. I mean, she felt terrible. She really did. I know. Those are little beginner moves but, that we did in the beginning. But the silver lining to 13 is Dylan... We found Dylan. Dylan, Dylan started. Yes, That's right. That is the a, silver look lining. At that, thank look at God that. for <laughs> Dylan. Did he so, start then? Yes. My God, that was a rough start he had. So that was but, a low moment. That's right. Moments. Yeah. Okay. I was. Go I actually started to ask about your achievements. Okay. okay. You're we'll, happy go, about we'll, we'll go back to achievements. All right. <laughs> but there, there's more fun to have <laughs> other <laughs> low moments. No, but but I I think uh, you know it's good that you see achievements being. Uh, I think okay. Let, let's let's talk about. You know, I had uh, in the tasting room today. Mm -hmm. uh, you know Derek, Lucas. Yes. Uh, jazz. Yeah. Ninety point one. Ninety point one jazz. He has a jazz uh, program. He's been coming here for ten years, maybe. Mm -hmm. Fifteen. Oh, fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, and he asked me. So, Oscar, what is a bad vintage? He said. Mm. <laughs> like so, we we always say is it a good vintage or bad vintage, hmm. and I don't think we ever explain how sometimes devastating a bad vintage is yeah. and what, what kind of uh, longevity it has, or impact it has, not just, okay, we didn't get the great fruit. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a lot to be said 
to have a bad vintage, and there's a lot to be said to have a good vintage. Um, so maybe we can talk about this but while you're on the pressing <laughs> things. We might as well continue. So, you know, a bad vintage, just to explain the bad vintage, is, you know, you look at a vintage for 12 months. Mm -hmm. you, you, you look at it, you come out of winter, see if there's any bud damage. Will there actually be fruit? And so how much? That could be starting to become a bad vintage if you have mm -hmm. a cold winter. Mm -hmm. However, low yield doesn't always mean bad vintage. It could then improve the quality later. Correct. Uh, and then you have fruit set, flowering in the spring, where you can start seeing if you're having going to have fruit and healthy clusters. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have a growing season, which then helps maturity and mm -hmm. so forth. But usually you will have a bad season or bad vintage will, will start hurting you in the fall hmm. during picking. I'm just quality wise on the grapes. Hmm. You know, if, if it rains and then it's like any other fruit that you have, if you have, you know, some years you have tomatoes that are bad or good, then sometimes you have apples and, and strawberries that have different maturity. It's a little bit the same thing, right? Yeah. So, I, so a, good, a, yeah. Good, a good vintage is that you have even, even ripeness, the right sugar levels, the right acidities, so the grapes comes in the way you want it. In general, that, we're right. I that's mean, a that, good that, vintage. That rarely, it, rarely, it doesn't really happen. Happens. That's right. That's right. right. So that's a good a bad Maybe vintage. It sounds so simple though. Like no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was going to so, get to the point. Okay. What is bad vintage? I'll, I'll, is. Okay. So if you have a bad vintage, you don't get those things. Right. Yeah. You or get this, none of it. You get none of it. Yep. Yeah. So you don't get the options. You might only have to be able to pick certain days, right? Mm -hmm. Not, you don't have the option to pick whenever you want. You have rot coming in. You mm -hmm. have to sacrifice fruit. You have fruit that's not perfect. And is, there's, there's stuff can, on can, it, right? Can, so, can so anyway. Yeah. Okay, why don't you... And then okay, I'm going to answer, answer the, the very first question. What makes a bad, bad yeah. vintage? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in, in, a, um, in, a, in a classic sense, if you look at, say, Barolo, Burgundy, Bordeaux, mm -hmm. a bad vintage is um, low yield caused by something in the, in the spring or the summer, mm -hmm. um, a, a tough growing season where your crop is not as healthy as it should be. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's always, it's always um, finished or um, um, uh, your, your, your final opportunity is during harvest. And when things just go wrong, you know, and, and as in usually, the fruit quality, you, right? And and most of the time, it's out of your control. Yeah. I mean, most of the time, it's it's you know, you had hail in the summer, and therefore your crop was lower. You damaged fruit. You cut fruit out, and then you have a vintage that a, a harvest season that it rained all the time. You have rot, and you cut more fruit out. Yeah, and, then, and the and disease pressure could with, start even during the summer. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. So, in a classic sense. The, the Europeans have, you, you know, if, if, you, if you drink wine from Bordeaux, you know that there are bad vintages, there are okay vintages or good vintages, and then there are the great vintages. Mm -hmm. The great vintages are like maybe, one, let's say, one in ten. Your bad vintages are two or three out of ten. ten, yeah. ten. You, and every, you have everything in between. Um, for, for us, looking at 18, 18 was the most challenging vintage. Now... Mm -hmm. I don't... 15 wasn't terrific either. Oh, 15 was hot and dry. Yeah, but the... Harvest was challenging. Yeah. yeah. But I don't... Um, and I think if you read about regions, let's mm -hmm. say Barolo, yeah. in a bad vintage, they're going to declassify their top their fruit. Their fr okay. So they'll take it from Barolo and make a, like a, a, a general Piedmonte... Village wine. Village wine, yeah. And so uh, that, to me, says a lot about a winery or, or a, a vintner. If, A, they can pull off a single uh, a, 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 a bottling of Barolo in a bad vintage. Mm -hmm. and but also what the choices they will what do. What the choices they're going to okay. make. Yeah. And so I, I think you, you, can, you meander down a path in that vintage. You, wanna, you want to obviously make the... the, the top quality that you can, but at some point you start pulling back and saying, well, I'm not going to make single vineyards because I need to make the wines that will carry us through mm -hmm. our next year or two years or three years, whether that's in the tasting room or whether that's in the market. And so for us, that is certainly dry Riesling. 
So then you start pulling back and saying, you know what, maybe I'm not going to make this single vineyard or maybe I'm going to make less reserve wine or maybe I don't make any single vineyard because the quality isn't there. So there is that dynamic of I'm going to make the best wine I can that is going to carry the company through to Mm -hmm. the next vintage. Now, on the other side, there is this inherent desire to prove that you can still make good wine in a bad vintage. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, 18 stands on this kind of like fence of, of it is the most challenging growing season. It, it was just not fun to go through. But then when we look at the wines that we pulled off, That's right. a really stellar dry Riesling, which was, again, to, to carry the company through to the next vintage, but we pulled off some really great reserve wines. Yeah. Um, but so if you look, I don't want to compare 18 and 15 then, but it's so what, what happens when you have a challenging vintage mm-hmm. like 15, where you have then some rot coming in and you lose fruit and you have to make some decisions on mm-hmm. sacrificing fruit. Mm-hmm. So in the spirit of, of Barolo here or those producers, we in 15, we didn't do a Magdalena Cabernet Franc. Right. We didn't do an HAW, right? No, 15 we no, did. F- uh, which one did a- we do? Uh, 18. 18 we didn't do H- HAW. Uh, but there's, there's a few that we just sacrificed not to make those wines in order to help the other wines right. out. You know, and then, I, I have and a then very because, funny story because what's happening in something we want to talk about when we have a bad vintage, yes. it's not, it's affecting then the wines in the tasting room and our restaurant mm-hmm. friends and our wholesalers, they don't get wine. And then all the other wineries in the area, they are feeling a little, don't have the, not the same confidence in the wines either. Right. And then they lose confidence in the planting and then they don't buy vines from us that we're planting for them. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of snowball effects that happens right. when we have so, a challenging vintage. Right. So, yeah. so the, the, I think, I think the takeaway from, from that for me, and, and this is kind of going back to something I learned from Herman is, um, you know, uh, um, you never put a bad wine in the bottle. Like you, you, so you, that's you, a you, great start. It, 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 <laughs> yes, but it sounds so simple. Yeah. But for many reasons, wineries will do will will not adhere to that. For many reasons, like yeah. I mean, there's financial, market pressure, whatever. And also, we, just personal choices. But like from it, it was something very clear from the beginning of working here that we I'd rather take the loss. Then deal with, deal with an, a mediocre just, one. Everything you just yeah. mentioned. Yeah. So, I mean, it does. It does. If you have better wines, it does makes it easier to uh, sell it and, and, and so forth. Absolutely. And and then we also hope that we'll have another good vintage coming up. Yeah. When you have a yeah. When you have a difficult one. So yeah. Okay. So now we talked. To, I asked about achievements, and Fred was like, the press fell apart. <laughs> We shit in uh, okay. vintages. But, but, sorry, can sorry. we just say? Can we back, say something to, positive? Yeah, I yeah. think um, <laughs> p- positive. I mean, I, I always look at. I, I seriously, the the easy vintages are are. You should make good wine in the easy vintages. Like you 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 should. It's the hard. It's the more challenging vintages yeah, right. that I, I always see the silver lining of what were we able to pull out. So two thousand nine being a very cool, very late vintage. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of our biggest achievements that we were able to pull out. Uh, a f- fantastic dry, um, a late harvest that's going to age longer than we're around. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, now the, the which one is now when we're getting old, it's not that long anymore, Fred. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully longer than we think. But like, um, I look. I think one wine that I've really thought about is the 2016 Single Select. Okay. As a as a pretty high achievement. Um, it's a wine that. I think under other circumstances or maybe, maybe other, if, if we were in a different setting, different winery, you wouldn't have been able to pull that off. Mm-hmm. But we, we took a big risk with leaving fruit out through, That's right. through rain. Through rain and storm. And then and we, we lost dry, a lot of fruit. And then it dried out and then we picked it up first. And we picked it. And then not only picked it, we ended up... Um, soaking it in the press and really extracting a lot of the fantastic botrytis 
uh, character. Um, mm -hmm. That's a wine that it was the first time that we had done a single bottling of a single tank of a single. Single select, select. sixteen is kind of a Auslese, Auslese Super plus. Super right Auslese. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice bottle of wine. Yeah, that was good. That was that was. Um, so, yeah. but that, yeah, we pr and that's on the wine that you probably won't be able to pull off every year either that you know it's it's interesting that is maybe a one in ten year yeah. wine to be honest yeah. yeah so um okay so back to then what do you, you want to go good or bad no <laughs> no 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 I, I find it interesting that when i ask you about good you say bad things and then the bad things no it's, say, it's not it's not good and no 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 it, but it's good it's a, i got it i got okay. it i get okay. it i get it so I, my another maybe post Positive yeah. is, is the 2014 Cuvée Brut that we have. Okay. That we, it, uh, we both finished. Now. We have no, for some. We both we finished, finished it, two yes. glasses. That's right. Um, <laughs> so it's like you're answering my questions. That's both. right. <laughs> They're just flowing now. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. Okay. Can, 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 can I, can mm -hmm. I talk about that for a second? Yeah. So I think um, when I started, uh, when we took over 2007, there mm -hmm. was 4,500 gallons of Cuvée Brut mm -hmm. to bottle. And um, Herman had been making wines. So I, this is, this is a, I think, an achievement. You, okay. you ready? Okay. <laughs> this is positive, all positive. So um, there was 4,500 gallons of Cuvée Brut, which was at least twice as much, if not three times as much, as I had ever seen Herman bottle or that but we had ever But that bottled. was because of the 06. That was because of the Which is another vintage. thing we can talk about. I'm going to We can, we can talk about 06. Okay. I'd rather not, but we could. No, that's right. That's actually so, one of the tough right. vintages. So then um, we take over the winery uh, August 1st of 2007. Mm -hmm. And there's this huge mountain to climb, this 4,500 gallons of Cuvée Brut to bottle that is like staring at us. And it was going to be the first bottling that... I had I would have will have done without Herman here. That was the first thing we did. It was time. sparkling wine, which is always sort of a, a gamble and a risk, um, and it was a huge volume, mm -hmm. forty five hundred gallons, which is wet, double of what we're doing today mm -hmm. at the moment. So um, we got the yeast going. We got every, I got everything bottled. I take the first bottle off the shelf. I look at it. And there's nothing. <laughs> there's no bubbles. Everything had settled out. I'm like, oh my God. So I called Herman right. I'm like, Herman, nothing's happening. <laughs> he goes, Fled, Fled, be patient. Call me a week. <laughs> so I called him. He's like, okay, I'll come out. So he, he comes out the next week. Mm -hmm. This is like the third week of, of August now. We open a bottle and there's some bubbles. I'm like, okay, great, great. He goes, let's walk through the, the vineyard and check out how everything's going. Okay, so we, we go through HAW, great. We drive up to Yosef and Magdalena. We go through Magdalena. Things look great. Oh, 07, it was super hot, It was dry. Super was dry. Hot, yeah. Go to Yosef. We pull into the Gibraltar Street. Oh, everything looks great. We're about to get back in the car. He goes, oh, by the way, Fred, I'm going to Germany for three weeks. <laughs> I'm like, you can't, go, you, you can't leave. He goes, by the way, you got this. You got this. <laughs> and, and you own the company now. Like, oh, great. So... He gets in his car. I say goodbye. All right, have you have fun in Germany. Uh, good to see you. Um, he, he turns around and comes, pulls up right next to me, rolls down his window one last time, and goes, "Red, red, everything looks great. No, don't screw it up." Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I know oh my that. god. <laughs> well, you didn't screw it up that yet. And seven was a good vintage. It was a nice seven was yeah. a great vintage. Yeah. But you know, back to the the sparkling, and back to the fourteen vintage. It's something that we have worked on. Yeah, and we continue to work on. And I think we have gotten quite good at that whole bottling process, figuring out the aging and getting wines uh, through through the aging process into the thirty six months and beyond, and being able to release really great cuvées. I mean, yeah, sparkling wine is something that has been changing a lot over the last fifteen years. Yeah, I mean, we are committing to that. Yeah, much more than we did before. Yep. Uh, both on the rosé or Blanc de Noir and Blanc de Blanc, but then Cuvée Brut. And even now, yeah. the Standing Stone Blanc de Blanc and Tenturia rosé. So sta that has been, a, a, I think, if I could help you with your achievements, yes, but you might add the, sparkling, the sparkling program has been yes. great. That's been, but that's taken some time to get to. 
Um, I was going, you know what? I, I brought out, some people had a Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. If we can taste that too, by the way. Sure. Because I, I wanted to hear if you can, okay, let's say some good things here. What yeah. are you, can you say top five? Can I ask you that? Yeah. Top five wines? Top five wines, ooh. Over the years? Okay. Let's see, um, see, by the way, Jen and Teresa are sitting there looking at things and like, oh, this is gonna be interesting. Top five wines, yeah. top five wines. Um, I think the 2014 Cab Franc, uh, I would compare that with the 2016 Magdalena Cab Franc. Uh, it, it really took our Cabernet Franc production into a different level, mm -hmm. I think. Um, 2016 HJW TBA is... So that, that's a noble select. That's a nice wine. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's great. No, that's yeah. right. Because I'm just agreeing with you a little bit. <laughs> that, because that is... Um, that's um, not very common that we get... This is the 16 vintage again that's showing itself. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool site that we have. They usually don't get the ripest fruit, but that year it could ripen to make it Trocken Beer and House the style, but retains the HAW acidity to it. Yes. So it's like yep. muscles and great it, it, acidity. It doesn't get a lot of botrytis, and the years that it does get botrytis, you have to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Like Yosef gets more botrytis, and that's why we've been able to produce consistent TBAs. HAW does not. Okay. Um, 08 Magdalena. Do you remember 08? 08? 08. Yeah, no. It was just you, me, Marisa, my yeah. my dear parents, um, my aunt, my grandfather I think was my sitting. My parents came and said hello too one day. Yeah. My grandfather was sitting on the Lee's filter, turning the button, <laughs> and he fell asleep <laughs> and fell off his chair. <laughs> and then we, we got my grand, God rest his soul, got him back on his chair chair and he's like he, he's sitting there with an ice pack and he refused to go into the house and he's just sitting there with an ice pack turning the button for the lease filter that's right that was 08 but 08 was oh it was, was nice beautiful Beaut vintage. and we always said that it was timely rains yeah it was not as dry as seven right. but timely rain timely rains and then if you wait, wait, i have one i have one more okay 11 could be brute 11 could yes hmm. i wouldn't pick that one but that's okay <laughs> that, that's why it was my list. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, what, what happened with the yes. Lennon Cooper Brute? Okay. We, did, we had a question um, about your parents. When did they move up to the Finger Lakes Express? My parents moved up here in 2009. So they were living out of a camper in 2008 during harvest. And then we, that's right. we all decided that that wasn't probably the long term solution, <laughs> knowing that, that they were helping out uh, so much with the, the winery. The but the commute was close. They were cam camping here. Yeah, right, they, 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 they were, were sleeping camping on the property. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, great. Does Herman still stop by? Yes. Yes, he does. He stopped by, let's see, it's about a month now that he's been here. Um, he still just walks in and looks around. He smells a little bit, he, uh, makes sure everything smells right in the winery he um he walks in the vineyards no unannounced. he was here at the wedding two weeks ago i know i'm saying is that a month ago that was a, almost a month ago oh, shit was it yeah um he walks in the vineyard without being announced um uh, unannounced he just walks in the vineyards and and then calls me fred i'm in the vineyard it looks good that's right and that's it <laughs> so no that's right he steps yeah. in but he's uh how old is he now uh eight He's almost 80. Yeah. Don't tell him that, though. Okay. Fair enough. We'll, we'll say okay. quietly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Herman comes around. But what also, oh. I think, um, you know, when we took over here, Fred, was 07. I remember so well because I, we had to sell 06s. And 06 was a challenging vintage for us. I think it, 06 was, I think, yes, 15, difficult, uh, 18, difficult, but we pulled off good wines those difficult years. And if we want to be a little harsh, I think six, 2006 was a challenging vintage, which actually might have not pulled off the best wines. So, so what so, happened? So Can it, you tell me what happened then? Right, so, so 06 was, 06 prior to us taking over is our 19. And so you can see the difference in what we've done with a cool vintage. 
Yeah, but it didn't 19. rain. It didn't rain during the harvest in nineteen. It did in it, six. It didn't rain that much in six. Six was, it's it. Six was its own, its own set of circumstances. But you're and referring to very high yields. I'm, I'm talking about high yields and just making wines that we shouldn't have made out of the vintage at hand. So, you know, again, um, if, if I go back to advice from Herman that we didn't follow in 06, and, and there, were, there were certainly a lot of reasons. One, it was just Herman and myself, again. Mm-hmm. Um, we had vineyards that came into full production. Um, we were machine harvesting just about everything. Mm-hmm. We were in the middle of negotiations of taking over the winery. Herman had disconnected a little bit. He might have disconnected just a little bit. Now, take that same vintage equals 2019, and I think we made significantly better wines. I, not think, I, we made significantly better wines in 19 by making the right decisions. So what happened in six then was that they were high yield. We picked both early and machine mm-hmm. harvest. You didn't mm-hmm. sort. You didn't do any sacrifices. Nope. And uh, and then so that th- I think that also made two thousand seven and eight so good. Uh, you, you know, the, for the, us, the growing season, the growing season, you know, because the vintages, you know, if versus we, the selling year. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm also <laughs> putting my. Uh, you know, marketing hat on here, right? So when we came, started you and me together here in seven, the wines that we had to sell was the 06 vintage. And so, that was a rough start because I remember you gave me the first taste of 06. Like, that is not even close <laughs> to what 05 did. And, but, you know, we, we were selling, we, were, mm-hmm. we made it through. And then 07 came, which we came in with our single vineyards yep. and they really rocked it out. And then 08, we had a beautiful vintage. And then that's where we were top 100 in Wine Spectator. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, starting off rough, you know, uh, for full transparency here, when Fred and I took over, we, you know, had 8.5% interest rates from the banks. Yeah. And we tried to just figure this out. And we had to sell 06 vintage. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was tough. That, that, was, that, was, that, was, a, that was a rough... So, but, you know, you know, you, you do, if, if you don't go through those rough periods, you, yeah, know, yeah. you don't And I think that's why we enjoyed it. 7 and 8 yes. so much. Yeah. And, then that, and that's when also when we gained a little confidence the next two, three uh, years. Absolutely. And we started but to he, build things and we, we, the finger legs got going a little bit. And, and, and here's the evening. thing, like before 07, before we took over, there were so many aspects of growing grapes and making wine that Herman and I talked about mm-hmm. that... We, we didn't, there wasn't necessarily the energy in the winery to take, to, to take right. it, to do it. And I think when we took over, we brought that energy into it. We <laughs> being you, me, Marisa, um, my wife Marisa, um, to, to take those steps. You know, and I, I look back and I'm like, you know, what were the things that, what were we trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. Like having trained under one person and, and made wine under one person, you know, it, one of the simple things that he said was, you'll never learn to make wine in a textbook. So, okay, all right, so let's learn how to make wine. And, and, and so, you know, that was, I soaked up so much information from him mm-hmm. and then bringing that into 07 and 08 to say, okay, what can we do that is different than what Herman was doing, but still the, the ethos or the, or the, or the, the, um, the, in a way, the quality that Herman was consistently producing, but take that up a notch. Yeah. You know, take that to another yeah. level. And it, it was, again, going away from the machine harvesting, going to all hand pick, which was is so much more work, uh, hand sorting, mm-hmm. what we do on the press pad. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, it, what happened then with the 708, going back to confidence, we looked, we're starting to dream about equipment, yeah. right? You know, do we have the sorting tables? You remember the first couple of years, I made this, pallet ladder that we stood That's on right. pallets. So we were all standing up about bent. six feet. And, <laughs> and our parents were <laughs> so dangerous. But, you know, we, we bought a sorting table later mm-hmm. on. It was a little later. But slides and we had... It was just... We were getting into... Right. We were, we're also, we were starting to see the result of what we yeah. did was showing. And I, I think, I think for, for, for me, the, the drive, like, like what, what were you driving towards? Yeah. Like, and... and Going 
reflecting on conversation, uh, conversations that I've had with Herman 20 years ago, 18 years ago, right before we took over, uh, was you know, this, this drive to produce wines that are reflective of a place mm -hmm. that, um, that are achieving a, a quality level that you're, you're proud of, mm -hmm. that, that you want to put in the bottle, every vintage. Um, I think those are, are, have been kind of a driving force um, and, and do it in a way that's, that's kind of responsible, that's, mm -hmm. that you're, you can be very um, satisfied with how you're growing the grapes and that you're, we're living here and, and breathing the air and you know, managing these soils and you know, so you know, our drive towards, let's say, drive towards doing biodynamic is, is kind of rooted in, in how the we've grown out of here. working with Herman and, and going to another level of presenting our, our sense of place. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I really, you know, it, it, it takes a long time. You don't just jump off the cliff and do it. Mm -hmm. I think that's where you get in trouble. Um, it, it's taken a, take a long time to, to make the changes that were necessary. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, that maybe answered the first question of your achievements. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you finally, <laughs> you finally got I, to the question. Know, okay, so uh, a little tougher question, Fred. I, yeah. I saw Teresa and Jen here saying, hey, there's not a lot of many minutes left, and we have only talked about three vintages. That's so right. We can look back to it. But we have to do this some other day. Here. But that's why we have the library. You that's know, right. if, again, look at this library is going to represent many stories and many vintages and will mm -hmm. bring up memories mm -hmm. when we open. We have, uh, some of you might have met Tara Clark, who's our in-house sommelier, but also our, our librarian then, uh, yeah. who's working on the library. And I believe, I think it's not really set up fully yet, this library, but by mid-July or end of July, I think we will be able to do some flights, some tastings. We have cataloged all the wines and, and taste them, taste through. We have to do, actually, I opened an 08 semi drive for you here. Because oh, man. I don't know if you, yeah. I, I, you. The reason why I opened that was because you and me had talked about Joseph Vineyard. Yes. You know, in 08, uh, Joseph Vineyard went to semi dry, you know, it was machine, before a machine harvest, <laughs> nice ripeness. And yes. then now it's one of our most sought after mm -hmm. parcels where we get ripeness, consistent quality. Yeah. And that has then changed our viticulture practices, paying attention to the wines and the soils. And also, so this is the, nothing against semi-dry. We can't say this was just semi-dry, but today it's Joseph, right? right. That fruit yeah. that went I, into... I, this is the, a great... Semi-dry is then... That's, the a great, that's a great comparison of how we have evolved here between yeah. an 08 semi-dry, which is... Drinking fantastic. That probably. drinks very well. Actually. Yes. <laughs> to to I think one of our one of our finest wines that we produced the 2019 Yosef mm -hmm. single vineyard. Before this was just about the last vintage that Yosef was machine picked, and and as I was working with Herman, it was a big vineyard block, big Riesling block, um, that was destined to semi dry because it was easy. And yet, what we found by handpicking it, mm -hmm. by making selections, by watching the fruit, seeing where Betrayus came in, seeing how and much ripe picking it in sections. You don't pick it all at once, right? Right. Pick it uh, very systematically. Actually, not only east to west, go, so going up the hill, but also north to south, which is much more difficult. Across we, panels. We picked it in ways. many different ways to figure out um, how the ripeness played with HAW versus Magdalena versus other fruit around the Finger Lakes. And we know now that this is probably one of the ripest sites in the Finger Lakes. Mm -hmm. So out of that, yes, semi-dry is important to us, but your ripest site should be in your Spätlesers, your Auslesers, your dry Spätlesers. Mm -hmm. So our reserve and wine now is based on Yosef. We do yeah. the single vineyards, we do the TBAs yeah. out of Yosef. So those sites has evolved or we have yeah. guided them through in the evolution. Yep. And the other one we had here was Cab Franc. We're pouring the 19, which is, is a, that style, the 19, is really what derives a little bit from 14. 14 is a, is a vintage that mm. we really enjoy. 
Did and you open 14? Yeah. Oh, delicious. I know, I got some good Thank stuff. you. <laughs> <laughs> We're celebrating, Fred. Uh, so, um, but 14 reflects a little bit what 19 is. I think mm -hmm. we enjoy 14 a lot. But that was rather tight yeah. when we released that. Uh, a little cooler vintage, a vintage that carry good acidity, which 19 also does. Yeah. And then I think now we have gone to a place, going through a meandering path with 04 Cab Franc and then 07 Cab Franc, which was you like... You missed 06, by the no, way. I know. I, I, want, I was going <laughs> to ask you also. I know we only have a couple of minutes left, but I want to ask you about your worst. Can you tell us three of the wines that you don't like? Mm. Your three worst wines? Should we end on mm. that note? But let's do it anyway. Um, Brutal. But, uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you think about those three, why I explain how we enjoy 19. We're getting to that wine, being a little brighter, lighter, fresher, but very ageable wine. Mm -hmm like the 14. Right. So if you get a 19 today and then sit on it for four or five years, yeah. that's when it hits. Its. Mm -hmm. So can you, you, one or two wines that you're not that happy one with. One or Come two. On, you get that um, if anyone has it at uh, home. Sorry if you, you can cook it with it if you want. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, so I, um, I, I think, I, I think um, our 06 Charnay's is not always there's bottle variation it's it's a little tricky um, i've always been critical against that i know you've always been critical defending it. it sometimes you know what sometimes you have to <laughs> um and then, oh, six short, yeah. oh, six short, it was a tough one you know what i'm going to i'm going on a limb here 2013 oh. magdalena kept Franc. and what give me a second so that cannot be the worst give me a second so that wine, That's right? So, so sometimes uh, <laughs> talk about pushing over a cliff. In in almost all of our productions, so I say like sparkling or dry riesling, single vineyard Magdalena. Looking specifically at Cap Franc, you have to know how far you can push to then pull back to the point where it is balanced and it is complete. So you're saying that was a little pushed a little bit too far. So Thirteen. Going a little bit out of balance. 13, we pushed it. As in, you picked super late, so it got very ripe. You picked in November. Yeah. Pushed it as hard as we could, and, and knowing that there's a chance that it's overripe. But we did it, and it was super jammy, very lush. Okay, I have it to was, defend was, that wine. Hold on, that hold was on. when we released that wine, that's delicious. Yeah. yeah. Now, now. It doesn't age that well. It doesn't age very well. <laughs> On a vintage that should age better. And, and so every Cap Franc now and every Cap Franc going into the future will not be like the 13, even from Magdalene, even from that, because I've, we pushed it to its limit and pulled back to something that now I think is, is, is um, more in, in, sync. in the winemaking it's more, style. Yeah. Has, it's a little bit more in back. sync nowadays. Yeah. yeah. So it, okay, fair yeah. enough. Okay. I, I know it was, it, was a wine, it was a wine in your wheelhouse. It was it was yeah, jammy. I liked it, man. it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we are uh, are ending here because um, I think somebody's Instagram stops after an hour. So <laughs> I think I know I I had so many more questions, but we have to do some other day. That sounds good. Or we can talk about if people come and we talk about old vintages here. Yeah. In in the winery, we look yeah. forward to. Welcome, if you haven't been with us here this summer, welcome you back to the winery. You know, we are, you know, last time, last year this time we were figuring out how to do tasting and now we're open, open doors, the patios are full and people are visiting. So it's good, good times to come and visit. And, and then hopefully in the end of July we will have this whole library thing going and we can open some old ones. Yeah. All right. I, I'd like to say one more thing. Yes, say one thing. So, yes. I mean, I think, you know, if, if I expand on the what our achievement here yeah, yeah, is yeah. Um, based on a family, good family our, our wonderful companions in crime, your wife and my wife yeah. and our kids, um, but our, our really fantastic winery team. Yeah. Um, I was I had team. That, yeah. Our staff today is Jenny, awesome. Jenny, Teresa, Neil's Neil here, Tace yeah. in the vineyards with Patrick and Tom and yeah. Everardo and Nancy. Certainly, obviously, Dylan in the winery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brianna. It's um, okay if you forget people. No, I, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. No, no, but it's but. right. I actually wrote that one of the achievements that we had was 
when we got out of 2020, mm -hmm. the way we got out as a team. Did we, did we get out of it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, but that has, it's a game changer, the staff yes. we have now. Absolutely. Completely game changer. So, uh, thank so our now staff. we just thank our staff. Very good, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's do this, my friends. We'll see you soon again. We're going to probably, we are hustling here in the summertime. So maybe in August, September, we'll see each other again. If you don't come and visit, of course. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.